Hello everybody and welcome back to Evil Ted Live. Uh, in today's episode, everybody, uh, a while back I made a samurai sword, I put a store-bought samurai sword, I kind of modified it a little bit. As you can see, I put a new hilt on it, which I really like. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a scabber to hold the rubber sword. Now, what are you going to make the scabber out of? I'm going to use a PVC board. Uh, some people call it Centra, and it's easy to cut. And so it's super friendly to work with and takes super glue really well. So that's what we're going to do today is I'm going to make a scabber for this sword out of the PVC board. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Here it is, the sword in question. This is the, uh, the rubber samurai sword I got and modified. Uh, complete another video on this. Um, what I did was I laid this down nice and flat on the table and traced it onto a piece of poster board so I can get an exact silhouette of my sword. So now I'm going to take this and lay it on a piece of Sintra. And I've gotten really turned on to the one, two, three blocks. So you just go ahead. I laid this down very, and laid on the, and I went ahead and took my Sharpie and traced it. See, there's the Sharpie mark. And this is what I'm gonna use to follow. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I got a heavy duty uh, cutter today because I'm gonna cut right through this uh, PVC board, like a hot knife through butter here. There's one side, cut the other side, so I have two of these. And now what I had to do was I had to find out the thickness of this. So since I made these so flush to the blade, I know for a fact that I can't glue on the inside, I have to glue on the outsides of this. All right, now after cutting the two sides, I had to determine the width of this blade. So I turned up like this, little piece of scrap Sintra I put right here, and took two scrap pieces and put them on the outside. So I know exactly the thickness I'm gonna need for my strips. And I made my marks, and of course, it fell out to be exactly two millimeters thick, which is great. I always like when things fall in place. My strips, two millimeters thick. So my next step, now I know for a fact that this is the exact diameter of the blade. I'm going to be gluing these guys on the top. But before I do all that, the, uh, I'm going to take a, a sanding block or a sanding stick. And I'm kind of even out these edges. I can tell right now when I was cutting these, they're a little wanky. Boom, it's stuck. I'm gonna dab glue. I'm just gonna try to do as much as I can in one shot. Let's do that. Got it glued on. See, I'm a little I'm gonna overhang. I'm just cut this, make it flush. It's easy enough to do. Right? Yeah, okay. All right, complete change of the gluing plan. So, for me to do that, I'm going to go ahead and tape all this in place. everything taped up and it just drops in place right like this I can jump I can pour the uh, gap filler and just rock this up like this and I'll put everything in place ta-da bam <laughs> that's stuck almost like instantly same drills this time we're going to glue on the top this goes the same width. Like that right now. All right. But we got this edge now, which is good. Put a little glue on it. There's definitely going to be some sanding and cleanup on this. I can tell you that for sure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that heat gun to this and heat this so it'll bend a little bit easier. There you go, heat that up, pull it in shape, like a knife. All right. So here it goes. Ta-da, look at that. I'm definitely gonna have to do some sanding on this, but that holds it 
So, so I just made a scabber for my rubber sword. Okay, everybody, while you were gone, <laughs> I went ahead and took the, uh, the sanding stick I had here, and I kind of filed down the edges to where everything was nice and flush and rounded off. So I kind of just sanded this all nice and flat and rounded off the edges. Now, of course, when you were watching, I had a little trouble putting the, um, the sword all in, but I realized it's PVC board, so I went ahead and took my heat gun, warmed it up. As you can see right here, I just bent it open a little bit. So now, the sword drops all the way in, just as I like. A spot putty, we're gonna kinda take a spatula and then fill these all in with the spot putty. All right, I got all the edges covered with my spot putty. The next thing to do, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this outside, let it dry in the sun. I'm gonna give this about a good 15, 20 minutes. Bone dry. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll do a little bit of wet sanding on this. And when I use a wet sand, I have a shop towel. I have myself a cup of water. I got a little bit of a 150 thing on these sticks here, and I'm going to just knock off the uh, the worst of it. This will bring it down, uh, get the high points fast. Yeah, this stuff sands beautifully. It comes right off. Awesome. Now, let's take some 400 grit. Have my cup of water. Do them wet sand. All right, this, I looked over, this has been wet sanded. It's dialed in just exactly where I like now. The next step is going to put some primer on it. So what I usually do for something like this, for my scabber, I got a strip of duct tape. I just kind of cut it narrow so I could put it inside the scabber and push it with my finger, flip it over, make a big hoop. Grab it like so. Got my wire, I'm gonna hang on the, uh, my bar outside so I can hang this and prime it. Of course, went out, hit with primer again. The one thing about working with something is you don't really see anything until you start getting a coat of primer. You guys can see really here, there's some kind of uh, some pitting on this side. Just, I need to do one more beauty coat. This looks really good. Gonna do one more pass with some spot putty. A little wet sanding. Now that it's been primer and spot puttied again, I'm very confident, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to paint that. We're going to be using, this is quick color, fast drying, all purpose spray enamel. Again, I wish there was some other paints I had, but this is what I have in the shop right now. I wanted something black, but not something shiny. So this is gonna semi black, and then luckily with the, uh, the weather today, this is gonna dry really quickly. So again, what I like to do is warm this can up first. Ta-da, okay, there it is. It is all painted again. This again, this is a flat black, this looks great. So let's go ahead and remove this tape but I'm gonna put some strips of leather. And yes, I have real leather with some metal rings I have right here. As you can see. This stuff is great because every time I have like an old backpack or if I'm at a thrift store, I find things with metal rings on. You can definitely buy them. You can definitely get on Amazon and buy these. But I've always found like every time I find old packs or things I'm cleaning up, before I throw anything out, it has a metal fastener. This stuff I've just been collecting over time. I think we're gonna use these two right here. This looks good. All right, got these two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some strips of leather. And looking at these guys, let's go like about a quarter on that. Right, let's get some dimensions here, shall we? So they're definitely gonna wrap that all the way around. Let's see, six inches. So one thing I love about the cutting board is that when you drop the strip down to where you're cutting foam or leather, you can just line up, you can see the line. So you can connect. Uh, but this rule is a bit too short. Let me grab a longer one. When cutting something like leather, I like having the big, strong metal ruler. Perfect. So let's cut two of those. All right. <clears throat> let's see what we're looking at here. So we're gonna wrap this around. I'm definitely gonna glue these guys down. Again, like this leather has a bit of a thick lip to it. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that edge down a little bit. And just kind of shave it. All right, got it. All right, just to kind of make it finesse a little bit more. Take some some sandpaper here. You know, I come to think of it, while I do this, these edges are kind of clean. Let me sand these guys too a little bit while I'm at it. 
I'm gonna round off this leather just a little bit. Is I'm going to place where you guys are gonna go, and I wanna make the, uh, I'm probably gonna have the seam at the top, bring it up, put a little hoop in there, and then overlap it. I'm gonna use some tape. Let's get some blue tape. This tape is gonna serve two purposes. It's gonna help me line it up. Here. Right there. Now that we have these marked, I know exactly what I'm going to glue them. Um, the best thing to do now, you can't just, you could super glue onto your paint. But what's going to happen is when it gets pulled or tugged on, it's not going to stick to the plastic. It's going to stick to the paint and it's going to peel off. So I'm going to take a sanding stick and just kind of rough this all up and break it down to the, uh, the plastic itself. So I know that the glue will stick to the plastic. Now I don't want to go all the way to the edge. I just want to go to the center. Just kind of scrape it down the, uh, like that getting ahead of myself again now I took the uh, knife and beveled down the edge on that so on this edge I need to uh, I beveled on the inside edge so when it overlaps it's not something to grab there but I realized this needs to come down a little bit too so got hoop under there like this fantastic Okay, I think that's dry enough. Let's go ahead and remove the tape. When removing tape, never pull on the tape away from the object. Always pull it with the same surface. And I'll show you. What, I'll show you what I'm talking about. When you're pulling tape off, try to stay along the same surface. This is a, tr a trick I learned at the prop house because we'd have to paint things so quickly the same day that um, it'd be very careful. So when you're pulling, you don't want to pull away from it. You want to pull with it. So you want to go against the edge like this. See what I'm doing? I'm pulling along the surface. The reason I'm doing this is because it's pulling the direction, not lifting up. Because if you start to lift up on this, you have a good chance of pulling paint off. And so to prevent that from happening, you pull along the surface like this. And you pull slowly. Take your time. Well, you know, after staring a little bit, I really like the leather on this. So much that I want to add more. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of wider leather and kind of the sandy stick the edges and I'm going to glue that onto the top of the scabber. I think that will really kind of help me pull it all together. All right, this one properly beveled, looks good. Make sure it stays lined up on the edge, like that. Yeah, this looks great. See, this is what already makes the store look 100 times better. So of course you see a little bit of his lip right here. I am going to tack that down with super glue. Hmm, let me think. And the barge would probably be a little cleaner. Any residue with the barge could roll up. Hold on, watch me as I change my mind. I can tell you people, when you're making something, sometimes what you're making will tell you how you're gonna do it. Like you'll have a plan in your mind, like oh I'm gonna do it like this, and then when you start making it, like, oh wait a minute, maybe this would be better. There is all properly dried, and I'll just go ahead and put it in place. Look at that, ta-da! I cut some additional strips of leather. What my plan was, is I was going to uh, kind of cut it, bevel it, and wrap it. All right, now, this is gonna be our starting point, at this angle. I'm gonna put some super glue, I'm gonna wedge it underneath there. There it is, that is my uh, PVC board scabber. I got my leather strips on it, add to detail, which really kind of pulls it together. The one thing that's missing is the sword. Put it in, put it in. 
And there it is. There it is, everybody. There's the scabber. All done with the straps of leather. Again, uh, I wasn't really going to do the leather until I saw the leather when I did the small straps. Drew the attention to it. I thought it looked really super cool. So I thought, why? If these look so great, let's add more. The leather top, the strap on the bottom really helped hold this scabber together. Again, the rubber sword is awesome. A sword I just bought and modified, and now it fits into my PVC. <laughs> PVC scabber. Again, this was made for the secret costume I'll be premiering at uh, San Diego Comic Con with Alicia Marie. Uh, there's some more stuff I'm going to do with this sword, but I don't want to really do too much of it on stream because what you'll see me doing might give it away, so I'm going to kind of keep it a little bit off camera. The only thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of painting, do some graphics, and do a little bit more aging, and that's about it. So, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. If you're the first time watching my videos, don't forget to subscribe. And I do this live from my Twitch stream. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Smith. I do Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. And you guys can go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, and get on my mailing list. While you're there, I have tons of patterns. If you're a newbie and into cosplay, you want to build stuff, I have plenty of patterns. And also, you can shop through my Amazon links. Everything I use in this video will be linked below the video. So if you guys want to know what it is, just look down there, click on it, and get it. And if you buy it, I get a little kickback, which helps me keep making videos. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.